So I've noticed that in the field of marine biology and really biology and all of environmental science, there doesn't seem to be many paid opportunities. So I really wish I would have known about a lot of paid opportunities earlier on when I was getting involved in undergrad. So I wanted to start this series to basically shed light on paid opportunities that do exist within marine biology and related fields like environmental science. So today I'm going to be talking about six specific paid internship and fellowship opportunities that are that you can apply to right now. So the very first one is definitely one of the biggest, most well-known scholarships out there in the United States at least, and that's the Noah Hollins Undergraduate Scholarship. So this is a huge, huge program. NOAA stands for the National Oceanic Atmospheric Association, and this is basically the U.S. federal government's program to monitor all things within the ocean and within the air. So the actual program itself is highly variable, and that's another reason why it's a really exciting, cool opportunity. It's actually just basically a large scholarship to allow an undergraduate to participate in basically any kind of NOAA-related research that their heart desires. <laughs> so the actual funding for the internship is up to $9,500 per year. So they'll fund your tuition um, if you've achieved the scholarship your junior and senior year. And in between those years, during your summer, um, they will fund an internship also paid about $700 per week at a NOAA facility of your choosing. And there's NOAA facilities all around the world, so there's all kinds of different things that you can work on. So once you're accepted as a NOAA Holland Scholar into this really competitive, awesome program, you then have to look for a specific sponsor that you want to work with at a NOAA facility. So you have to do a bit of work yourself in actually finding a research supervisor, um, on a project somewhere in the world at a NOAA facility, but once you are a NOAA Holland Scholar, you have funding and you've already proven that you're a very successful, um, driven applicant, so it's not too difficult to find someone to work with as long as they have something for you to work on. So don't stress too much about that. But once you actually do the internship, there's a really wide range of things that you can work on. I have a few friends that participated in this internship and they worked on all kinds of different things. I had friends in Hawaii that were working on a variety of programs. One was an environmental engineer working on a surveillance system for monk seals on the island. I had another friend that was working with the policy department of the Papahanaumokuaea. <laughs> National Monument, definitely uh, not how it's pronounced, but the National Monument in Hawaii, he was working with policy and another friend working with coral ecology and ArcGIS. So there's all kinds of different things that you can work on and a lot of funding that comes along with this. They'll also, on top of the internship, will fund you to go to a conference after you've completed your internship to talk about your research. I had a few friends that went with me to the Ocean Sciences meeting, which was extremely expensive. I got half of it funded, but it was still $1,000 out of pocket, which is just insane. NOAA will fund the entire thing. They'll fund your plane ticket to get there, um, go to the conference, and even give you a stipend every single day while you're there. So, awesome opportunity. Um, COVID has definitely made this um, a little bit interesting for the future. Right now, they're doing some sort of hybrid um, virtual and in-person experience. So, definitely look further into this program and ask the actual um, program advisors about um, what's happening this next summer and moving forward but um, otherwise really great opportunity so the second internship i wanted to mention is even better in my opinion and this is another NOAA internship and this one is specifically for minority serving institutions so really incredible by NOAA in establishing this scholarship it's basically the NOAA Hauling Scholarship, but even better and only for um, people of underrepresented backgrounds. So this is the NOAA Educational Partnership Program with Minority Serving Institutions, Undergraduate Scholarship Program. So kind of a mouthful, they abbreviate it EPPMSI, under, Undergraduate Scholarship Program. And the reason I say it's even better than the NOAA Hauling Scholarship is for one, because it's only for minority serving institutions, so according to the U.S. Department of State, a minority serving institution is a Hispanic serving institution, historically black college, 
in universities, um, tribal colleges and universities, Alaska Native serving institutions, and Native Hawaiian serving institutions. So only those institutions or people from those institutions are eligible to apply. And because of that, there is a much smaller applicant pool. So it is much easier for people to achieve this award. Um, and the award itself is so awesome. So it provides funds for two years of undergraduate study to, again, rising juniors uh, majoring in any of the STEM related fields. And this is up to $45,000 in total support. This is just crazy. <laughs> And that includes travel and conference participation. So like the Noah Holland Scholarship, they will pay for your travel and pay for a conference for you. There's actually two internships associated with this scholarship. The first is the summer after your junior year. So this is an 11 week paid summer internship at a training facility in Silver Springs, Maryland at a NOAA facility. And during the second summer, you have just like the NOAA Hauling Scholarship, an internship of your choice at a NOAA facility anywhere in the world. So again, this is like the NOAA Hauling Scholarship where you have to find a supervisor to work with, but again, you'll have the funding behind you, so it won't be too difficult to actually find one. So at the end of both internships, this is really cool, but they'll have you present the results of your research to an education and science symposium in Silver Spring, Maryland. So a really cool opportunity to get some experience presenting your research and also networking with a really cool, small niche of people that are a lot like you and driven, also successful people. So unfortunately for this internship specifically, like the Noah Holland Scholarship, you have to be a US citizen and you must be a rising junior. So make sure that you are aware of this ahead of time and properly plan this to apply as a rising junior. Um, the deadline for this is also February 1st, 2021. So the next internship I wanted to mention is another really great one in Monterey Bay. And this is an REU. So if you don't know what an REU is, it's a research experience for undergraduates. And this is a program funded by the National Science Foundation. So there's REUs all over the country and very diverse types of REUs. Um, definitely look into this further, but they're typically 10 week paid internships at a specific partnered research institution. So this one is in Monterey Bay. And the reason I wanted to mention this one is because it's currently accepting applicants. And it's also really unique in that it's a collective of six different research institutions that are all focused on marine related studies. So the research institutions that are involved in this collective program are some pretty stellar research universities and institutions. So really great opportunity to kind of get your foot in the door and start networking with some really incredible researchers. Um, and if you want to work in this location later on, another really great idea. So unlike the Noah Holling Scholarship and the EPP MSI Scholarship, this program you don't really have to reach out to and connect with a specific supervisor. They kind of do a bit of the matching for you with a specific supervisor, but it's definitely not a bad idea to look at the supervisors participating in the program and start thinking about one that you would be interested in working with. So once you're actually applying to this uh, program, it's going to make your application much stronger if you have a really clear idea of what exactly you would want to work on, or even a specific person would be really powerful to show that you have a lot of intention to applying to this specific program. It's definitely for programs like this really important to recognize that you are applying to this program for a very specific reason and that it's really going to benefit you specifically and your specific interests later on. So it's going to do you a lot of good to do your research on the participating mentors and supervisors. So the deadline for this program is also February 1st, 2020. So the next internship I wanted to mention is at the Moat Marine Lab and Aquarium located in Sarasota, Florida. And this is a really incredible research institution. It is not associated with a university. As far as I understand, it's not directly associated with a university. So Mo is an independent nonprofit marine research institution, and there's 30 PhD scientists and over 200 employees at this institution. So there's a wide variety of different programs and things to get involved with at this 
specific marine lab and there's a lot of really high caliber research that occurs here. So as far as the actual program itself, it offers a $5,500 stipend over a 10 week period, so a lot like other REUs. You get free housing in a local dormitory, which is awesome, and you also get financial support for actually getting to the research institution from your home institution, which is also incredible. So it mentions that there's paid research training experience for up to 10 undergraduate students, which is really cool because this is a larger RU program. Normally, RUs are a bit smaller than that, or they're even only one to two undergraduates accepted. So a bit more variety, and you get sort of a cohort of people to interact with, which is beneficial for lots of reasons. It also mentions that you'll get the opportunity to present your research in a manuscript style paper plus a laboratory wide symposium. And this is really awesome for continuing to network and get to know your cohort and also the incredible researchers at this institution and getting to kind of flex a little bit and show off for these really renowned scientists and maybe develop some really important connections later on for the future. It also mentions you might have the opportunity to go to a conference, which is really incredible and really um, not that typical because conferences can be really expensive, but you might have the opportunity to go, and if you can, you definitely should. There's so many benefits associated with a conference, with connecting with other professionals, and also becoming aware of many different opportunities. So many different things arise from going to a conference, so you definitely should go to one if you can. It also notes that historically underrepresented minorities in STEM are encouraged to apply, which is really incredible that they seem to be more focusing on historically underrepresented individuals for this program. So you might even have an edge applying to this program if you come from one of these underrepresented backgrounds. Some other restrictions they mentioned with eligibility is that you have to be an undergraduate and you also have to be a first time RU participant. So you can't have already done an NSF RU the summer before. So the next paid internship I wanted to mention is located at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute located in Panama. This is a really widely known and really established um, research institute for both land and aquatic tropical research and they were established over 100 years ago in Panama. So they have 40 staff scientists, 350 research projects, and published 400 peer-reviewed articles per year. So some crazy statistics associated with this place. So it's pretty established and pretty widely known. And because of that, their fellowship is really competitive. So their fellowship is more geared toward graduate students, although undergrads can apply to it. And because it's pretty widely known and pretty competitive, there's definitely a lot more work that goes into applying to a fellowship like this. This fellowship is about three months and you can do it at four different times of the year because there's always projects and always research occurring at this institute. But before you apply, it's really important that you have some sort of connection with a supervisor and some sort of support from a supervisor before you actually apply. So this is uh, definitely harder to do as an undergraduate if you don't have much experience doing this, but basically you have to research some of the professors at the institute, you have to look through their research and look at a professor that you're really interested in, reach out to them and see if they have any projects you could possibly work on, and then gain their support before you've actually applied. So this is definitely really difficult to do, but if you're really determined to get experience working abroad at a really established research institute, then this is the one of the best in the world. So as far as the actual award itself, it's about $1,000 per month and about $3,000 total for the stipend, so pretty modest. You also get a little bit of research allowance, which is really generous for um, a program like this. Um, but again, this is really focused on graduate students, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't apply as an undergraduate. If you're really determined, you could still get something like this. Um, deadlines for this application are February 15th, April 15th, July 15th, and October 15th. So the last paid internship I wanted to mention is a really cool one located in Florida, and that's the Marine Conservation Internship at Reef. So Reef is a nonprofit and they are a really cool organization in the Florida Keys. Reef has a lot of educational resources and programs to teach people how to identify species on the Florida Keys reef system. And they also teach people how to do surveys, how to analyze that data and put it into their system. 
So they're constantly uh, putting out educational talks about these fish surveys and different types of surveys and also invasive species and they also do some youth programs to teach kids about marine conservation. So this internship is really unique because you get office and field experience. So if you're interested in getting involved in a nonprofit later on, if that's one of your major career um, options that you're thinking about, this is a really incredible internship because you get a lot of experience working as an integrated part of the nonprofit team. So as an intern, you're communicating with affiliated partners and people that are interested in learning more about your educational programs. You're also helping facilitate these programs both in the field and in the classroom and online. And you get a lot of experience working with science communication, putting out the word for reefs resources. So a really dynamic kind of internship. And normally this position is typically unpaid, which is unfortunate, but as a nonprofit, it's sometimes difficult, especially a smaller nonprofit like this. It's difficult to supply funds for that, but there are paid opportunities for this internship. And that's why I wanted to list it in this paid opportunities list. So there's two different opportunities to get paid for this program. And the first one is the Heppel Reef Marine Conservation Internship Scholarship. And this is offered in the fall. And the other one is the Our World Underwater Scholarship Society internship position. So the Our World Underwater Scholarship Society is a larger organization and they have some really cool renowned marine internships that are very competitive. So that is not an easy one to get, but um, it is an option if you are dedicated to this type of position. So those are my paid opportunities for November, 2020. I really wanna to try to create some more videos like this about different scholarships and paid internships and really create opportunities within marine biology, environmental science and biology, just because they're not always super clear and it's nice to have a little bit of guidance for them. I know I would have really appreciated that early on in undergrad. So anyway, thank you for watching and please let me know if you like this video by giving a like and let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for other types of videos like this. But anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you again for watching.